Greetings, people of God and people out there in YouTube land. <laughs> I'm T. Craig Lewis, and we are here with another episode of uh, the Exposition. <laughs> I don't know what I, what I can't think of it. The Exposition. And this is actually our fifth episode. Uh, so uh, we've been cranking them out weekly. Um, and we thank you all for all the support again. Uh, everyone that is uh, sending comments and, and, and blessing us with their testimonies of how the messages. I think the church hurt one that we did last week was mm -hmm. just tremendous for so many people. I cannot, Absolutely. I can't even count the amount of emails and correspondence I've gotten from mm -hmm. people that are just saying that this has been something that was in their heart. They, many of them, their hearts were decaying because of church hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gave them an opportunity to kind of hear it be ministered to. It's hard to hear about church hurt in church. Right. I mean, of course, especially if you were hurt there and you don't want to go. So right. it was good that uh, we covered that. But this particular broadcast, we're going to be uh, dealing with uh, a great falling away and dealing with the great falling away, as mentioned to us in the word, uh, in, in the Bible. We're going to be talking about that. All right, Carmina. So in talking about that, it seems like the climate in our nation has gotten so tense. You know, people are, are upset, they're frustrated, and it seems like it's more than ever before. Why is that? What's causing that? Um, I, I think it's important to, to um, highlight the fatherlessness that's in, that's, that, that we've witnessed and that we see going on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can see how people will say, what does that have to do with the great falling away? Um, and we touched on it a few episodes ago when we talk about how fathers instill in their children, especially the young men, commitment, right, and establishing boundaries and borders mm -hmm. so you know how far to go um, and you know what to say, when to say, um, and things of that nature. So let, let's go to the Bible. Um, so f one footnote here is provoked to wrath by a lack of commitment from parents. Um, we're talking about children here. So in Ephesians 6 and 4 it says, and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonishment of the Lord. So um, this is pertaining to it in a sense where if if you grew up in a home with a father, he's teaching you obedience, he's teaching you discipline, right? When you train for child in the way that you go, when they grow old, they will not depart, then obviously going out into the world as an adult, young male or young lady, um, you carry yourself or conduct yourself as a Christian, which means we obey the, the laws and commands of God. And we have Jesus Christ as a leader um, that has showed us in this earth, right? The Bible says he's a high priest that is familiar with how we live this life. He had to endure some of the same things that we had to endure um, and beyond. Uh, so as far as obviously being the only one that, that defeated death. So we have a high priest that we can look to when we're going through something mental or something physical um, that, we can, that, that we can talk to mm -hmm. um, that will lead us into the right places that we need in order to keep us, you know, on that right path, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you feel about it? Well, as, as far as the nation um, becoming tense, like you're talking about fatherlessness, mm -hmm. I don't know why people think that children don't grow up. Right. You know, people make decisions. Parents make decisions. Sometimes, I mean, you know, just as a pastor, I see people do things and I'm like, you really don't believe that these children are going to grow up one day, do you? You know, <laughs> right, 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 I mean, right. you're making some very selfish choices mm -hmm. uh, like divorce or, you know, long separations or just uh, de being deadbeat or not caring for your kids or your family or whatever. Uh, or, you know, the man not being a provider, protecting priest or just falling short of your duty. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, when I had children, I mean, they became my they became my duty. I right. just like, you know, my children are my world. This is who I work for, who I live for. So me and my wife have to make sure we give them what they need. I mean, right. it's automatic. It's mm -hmm. like we put things that we want aside for them. Mm -hmm. Well, this hasn't been happening much uh, in the last 20 years. And so now those 20 year olds that were born to the selfish uh, people or the people who were self-centered or the people who decided that Eh, we're just going to split up because I don't like you no more. I want to like somebody else. Or, right. you know, just, just casual. I mean, just so frivolously, you know, um, separating and, and leaving the homes and divorcing and just all these things. Those kids that were traumatized by those actions are now the leaders of our nation or they're in position to be. And so that's why we're seeing this uh, great, you know, what you were saying, Carmina, this great upsetting or unsettled. Uh, attitude 
that we're seeing. It's just right. in the air now. It's just everyone's angry. Everyone's wrathful. Everyone's, you know, like the scripture you use, provoke not your children to wrath. It didn't right. say mother. Right. It said fathers, fathers. provoke them not mm-hmm. because the father is the head and the leader and he's the one that can do that. Right. You know, I've always noticed, I don't want to go too long on this, this part, but man, children, I guess it is my show. But children, you know, they um, <laughs> take right. that time. Yeah. But, but <laughs> uh, you, you know, a lot of times, you know, children, if they don't get the things that they need when they're uh, young, the, the Bible tells us to train up a child in the, way should, when, in the way they should go when they're old, they won't depart from it. Right. But a father can provoke a child to wrath in a way that a mother cannot. Mm-hmm. You know, a kid can be abused by a mama and that's still mama. Yeah. They can be neglected while the mama's in the club, shaking it, whatever. She leave them, leave the kids on big mama, leave the kids. As long as it's mama, that nurturing demeanor thing mm-hmm. happens and the child isn't really provoked to wrath. Now, they mm-hmm. may get into other things, but that right. wrath and that anger, that comes from that father stepping away and not giving his identity to the children and not being a strong father. So that's why the Bible is specific. In that, pas- in that passage and also in Colossians, mm-hmm. it's specific to say fathers uh, instead of mothers. And that's why our world is like it is now, because these kids grew up and now they're angry and entitled. Well, let's talk about this for a moment, because I want people to really understand. So in the Bible, it speaks about the great falling away. What exactly are they falling away from? Let's define that. Okay. Right. Um, and, and if I can dibble back, mm-hmm. but still keeping in the same um, light of your conversation, uh, Pastor made a good point that, that made me think about authority, right? Mm-hmm. So not having a father in the home uh, leaves the children, one, not recognizing what authority is mm-hmm. and also not knowing how to respond to it. Mm-hmm. So in the light of the climate of the world today, you, you have a whole generation, um, and we can't just blanket it, but mm-hmm. it seems to be an entire generation <laughs> who, who missed that, that key point. Mm-hmm. So if, if we're dealing with, and we're still in the huge era of social justice, um, but we won't deal with the fact that these young people don't respond to authority well. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a cop every time, but what about a pastor? Or what about a, mm-hmm. a man just in a corner store, or whatever the case may be? Mm-hmm. If, if I'm telling you to close your mouth, if I'm telling you to sit down, if you had a father in your home, you would recognize the authority in that and just be obedient to it, whether you agree with it or disagree. Because mm-hmm. we have a lot of YouTube, because you know, we're in the social media phase, right? Mm-hmm. You have a lot of videos going viral where young men are constantly into it with older men. I remember coming up, and I'm, I'm still young. Like I, I remember coming up, I wouldn't dare book up at an older gentleman as my elder, just mm-hmm. because of the, the, the discipline and respect that was instilled in me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they'd be falling away from the truth. That's a part of the truth. Mm-hmm. The Bible says not, not to question the elder, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or not to, uh, in, 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 in today's term, book up to or try to, t- uh, you know, combat an elder. Yeah, challenge. And, and, and challenge all of that, right? Yeah. So. Truth is what they're falling away. If people are believing whatever makes them feel better about themselves, um, this leads back to the the erroneous doctrines of men. Going back to the Hebrew Israelites, right? We've talked about it, we've highlighted it over and over and over again. These gentlemen or these men or these so-called men, they have an issue with authority. This is why they don't have a leader, they have leaders. (laughs) So any given time of the week or the month, depending on how they feel, there's a different man leading them. Instead of hearing that one voice, Mm consistently, of course you can't be obedient to God because God is one voice consistently. So if I'm in a situation where I need to hear that one, as, as uh, the older people say, that one small, small still voice, mm-hmm. instead of having that, that, that idea of having the angel or the devil on your shoulder, mm-hmm. when you're a child of God, there is no devil on your shoulder, right? right? Because we know that for every temptation is a way of escape, mm-hmm. right? It's always going to be, and we have the authority and the power to tell the devil to flee. Mm-hmm. So it's the truth um, that people are falling away from. Um, that, that, I, that, that, that we can obviously recognize. Yeah, and something I was uh, um, talking to the Lord today, and, you know, I feel like the Lord showed me something that I had never seen before concerning this particular uh, question as far as what are we falling away from. And I feel like, this, you know, the Lord spoke to me that people today are falling away from the protection of God's chosen protectors. So the reason why people are so exposed to demonic influences, the reason why people are so oppressed with anxiety, depression, and all these things now. Almost every commercial, you can't watch a TV show, and the commercial is some drug to help you with your drug depression. Right. You know, you, you already have a drug for depression. This right. is to help you if that drug isn't working. working. Right. So used with your depression medication, mm-hmm. this drug 
will actually help. But the first side effect, of course, is suicidal thoughts. Uh, wow. So, you know, just, just crazy stuff like that. But mm -hmm. why, what is wrong with people? Why are they like this? God began to deal with me about people just falling away from the protection of God's chosen protectors. Who are these people? The Heavenly Father, of course, is a protection for us. Then the Father in the home. The Bible says, how can you spoil a man's goods unless you first bind the strong man? Said a strong man armed keepeth his palace and his goods are safe. So the Bible tells us that the Father in the home is also a protector. And then another protector that a lot of people, especially in the African-American community, are falling away from is the pastor or the shepherd that watches for their souls. Right. So you've got your heavenly father, you've got the earthly father, and then you've got the shepherd that watches for your soul. Not that the pastor should take a position as a father because the Bible said, call no man father. So, you know, we don't Somebody do that here it. at ABC. Ain't nobody calling me daddy but the ones with freckles, <laughs> right. you know, the, the, that I birthed, you know, or me and my right. wife birthed. But... At the same time, the protection that a pastor gives you is that he's watching for your, show, watching for your souls. Right. And a lot of these people have soul issues. They do. They have soulish issues. They have issues with spirits. They have spiritual soulish issues. They have, you know, mind issues, heart issues, racing thoughts, uh, rapid heart rate. All of these things lead to that soulish spiritual issue because they are under the, they're not under the protection of the Heavenly Father, the Father in the home, and the pastor. And see, the good thing about this is, in our church, the pastor or the shepherd, which is me, teaches the Father how to be that protector in the home, right. and also teaches you about the Heavenly Father, so you'll know how to rightly apply His Word, so that He can be a protector for you as well. So this is, you know, all of this is missing in this generation. Folks right. just walking around willy-nilly with no protective covering whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. Hebrews says it like this, Hebrews 13 and 17, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your so, souls. Right. You know, so many people have church hurt like we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. So because they would feel like they were hurt by a word that was preached or by uh, you know, a minister or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, they shun the church and they stay home and they, you know, feel like they can do this job on their own. But this is not the way God ordained it. He specifically gave pastors and shepherds to watch for the sheep and watch for the souls of his sheep. Well, I got to ask this question. This is something that I'm seeing so much of. It seems like in this tense society that we're talking about, Christ has become the enemy. So people are like slamming anything that has to do with Christianity, anything that has to do with the Bible. They're just slamming it. But then you see the other things seeming to get a pass, like Buddha, Cali, Muhammad. They seem to get a pass, but then Christianity, it gets slammed and it's called the white man. It just gets a bad rap. Why is that? Right. Right. And why did it become the white man? Like, right. Like, 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 like there's no other <laughs> earth. Like, I mean, there's no other world. Like, right. Everybody thinks it's just this just nation. Right, right. You know, like it's it's this nation and the white man. That's the biggest problem in the Bible right now is what's <laughs> going on. America's not even in the Bible. Right. At all. <laughs> okay. Right. I mean, but <laughs> it, it, that's, that's good. I mean, it, it goes back to, again, to fatherlessness, right? Because okay. the father will instill in you the right thing. Okay. So if, if, if I'm hearing about Christianity and I'm living contrary to what Christianity's, um, you know, beliefs are, then I have a problem with that because I never had a father to instill in me what right is, right? So that, that's, that's narrowed down to a, a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. but I'm saying in terms of standard. So if I'm a Christian, I am, I believe in the Bible, mm -hmm. I do. There's things in the Bible that say, that, that tells me that I shouldn't do. I, I shouldn't do certain things, mm -hmm. right? But if I've never had somebody in my life consistently, like a father, to tell me the difference of right and wrong, right? The consequences of doing something right and then showing me the consequences of doing something wrong. I'm gonna automatically have a problem with Christianity and I'm gonna automatically chalk it up to what somebody else tell me that it is. Mm -hmm. Because all my life I've had to go to different sources to get different pieces. I haven't had, again, that one consistent thing to teach me or to rear me in truth or sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. So um, the Bible holds us to a standard. Um, that some did not want to adhere to, which is obvious, and they want to discredit it because their lives are so far from it, which is basically what I just said. So if I'm saying that you should not divorce and you've divorced not once, not two, but three or four times, there's no way that you can find yourself as a, in the light of, of marriage in the Bible. So you want to discredit the Bible in the area of marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm telling you that you shouldn't be a person that sleeps around with multiple people and the Bible says, young lady, keep yourself. 
right? And you are the person that's around here sleeping around, then of course you got to discredit the Bible when it comes to that. So once I, I get a list of five to ten things of what I'm doing that's contrary to what the Bible mm -hmm. is, then the white man did it. <laughs> that, that's the punchline. Somebody else did it. And we talked about a few episodes ago about looking at yourself in the mirror. Right. It's all accountability. A father will teach you accountability. Yeah. Listen, son, listen, daughter, you took this action. This is your consequence. Deal with that. But the key to that is don't do it again. So you want to deal with that consequence again. Yeah. So that's the issue. Yeah. And our whole moral code is taken from the Bible. Right. So, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, don't discredit the Bible when that's the source of morality. Right. You know, God is the source of morality. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for you to say that the Bible is not valid, well then why are you getting upset when your, your girlfriend cheat on you? Right. Or your boyfriend cheat on you? Right. Why is it even cheating? Right. Why can't that just be normal? Mm -hmm. What makes that cheating? Mm -hmm. Or when you're married, your, your wife cheats on you or your husband cheats on you and now you're upset and now you, you know, but you, remember you don't believe the Bible. You believe it's all just made up. So if it's made up, there's no, mo there, there's no code of morality. So right. There is no cheating. There right. is no adultery. So, man, just, you know, y'all just keep doing everything. Do what you want, right? Yeah, yeah. Do what thy <laughs> will. Because right. there's no, there's no, well, see, that's what I'm saying. The Bible is a code of morality. So you don't want to throw the Bible out because the Bible is what keeps you from getting upset at the folks that you say you love. Right. Because they have to, they have a standard that they have to obey. But the problem is the more wicked people get, the less they want to adhere to any kind of code of morality. Right. So the more immoral I get, the more, you know, false a moral code begins to sound to me. Mm -hmm. In other words, I want to do, you know, what I want to do. I mean, 30 years ago with a gospel artist, uh, you know, like Kurt Franklin, jump out of the car and do the Drake challenge. That right. would have happened 30 years ago. That would have been a no-no. Why? Because that's worldly music that's glorifying sex and all the things we're supposed to be preaching against. Well, if the preachers ain't preaching against it anymore mm -hmm. and that code of morality is, is, ha has been degraded, mm -hmm. then now it's, 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 you know, we do whatever we want to do right. and just say, Lord, either Lord forgive me or God understands right. because we're making God what we want. Mm -hmm. But we can't throw the Bible away. And, and the reason why, to answer another part of your uh, question, Carmine, the reason why they don't attack these other gods is because all these other gods minister to your soul and your emotional needs. Yeah. So these are gods that were created to just make you feel good like you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why they brought yoga into the potter's house. That's why T.D. Jakes uses yoga because that's all he's ever been. Mm -hmm. Make you feel good like you are. You should have blew your brains out and you, you wouldn't look at you now, honey. But look at you now, you're still sleeping around, you're still a slut, you're still, you know, mm -hmm. stealing, you're still lying, you're still doing everything you was doing before. Yep. Well, look at me now, I need to change. Mm -hmm. if, my, if nothing changes, nothing changes. changes. So if I don't stop the sin, nothing is gonna change. But Jake's don't preach that message. Mm -hmm. Osteen don't preach that message. These guys don't preach those messages and they act more like these uh, Buddha and Kali and <laughs> all of these things because they're preaching a soulish message that right. caters to the people. And the Bible said that it would get so wicked that the people would choose those kinds of messages mm -hmm. to pacify themselves. That's what it means, itching ears. Uh, they're, they're pacifying themselves to feel better about themselves mm -hmm. and you know they never make changes so nothing in their life really ever changes. Right. So we've got to get into a break but before we do that you both mentioned the word discredit and I want to talk about that for a moment because what we're starting to see now is that everybody's saying okay we got to follow the law of the Old Testament and they're discrediting the writers of the New Testament mm -hmm. and what they're saying is, is that it's the opinion it's not God's word since men wrote it. Let's right. talk about that for a minute. <laughs> I want to read this like an infomercial. Okay, this. okay. <laughs> did God's finger write the Torah? <laughs> or did a man named Moses, right? It's just like, we, we, know, we know God is the, is the inspiration behind the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. And we can have these arguments or discussions all day long. Mm -hmm. But if the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, then no man on this earth, on top of it or beneath it, is going to be able to stop that. So at the end of the day, it still comes down to just a person being the enemy of the cross. You want to stop the truth, right? Or you've, you've, limited, you've limited what the truth can be to you because, again, you just won't make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Or you won't, you won't adhere to authority or sound advice or sound doctrine that's been given to you. 
So you want to limit it, right? Mm -hmm. So I got to, again, discredit the Bible in a sense where I'm, I got to say that men wrote it no different than us talking now. Mm -hmm. This discussion is still inspired by God. And again, we're saying the same things over and over and over again. The same Bible that was preached 20 years ago is the same Bible that's being preached today. But somehow generations are being affected by the word of God in the sense of change. Mm -hmm. So fathers are now standing at home. Mothers are now standing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, the, the, you can't discredit what we're actually seeing manifest every single day by, in, this, uh, in this faith walk. That's right. And people discredit parts of the Bible uh, because they've seen it done before. Right. That, that's my motto. I, you know, I had a Hebrew Israelite tell me the other day, you know, hey, man, you know, quit, 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 quit speaking Paul's words. Those are just the words of a man. Let's hear what God's word says. Right. And so where did he get God's words from? <laughs> what is God's word? The Torah. So who wrote that? Did a man write the Torah? Or did God think? I mean, my Bible <laughs> didn't have like a burning font <laughs> right, right. in it. And so God did. Right. I, I don't, that, that's crazy. But he has a good point because I've seen so many churches discredit Paul's mm -hmm. writings. And that's where that comes from. That's why I tell pastors all the time, dude, the only way you're going to be able to stand up in this last day is if you are preaching sound doctrine and you are following what the Bible says. Right. Paul said, don't put that woman up and let her pastor the church or that she shouldn't assert authority over a man or she shouldn't teach a man. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're now you're saying, well, Paul, see what was going on at that time. <laughs> Paul was a little, you know, he was a little chauvinistic in some of his approach to certain Okay, so now we're going to judge Paul like a yep. human and mm -hmm. discredit some of the Bible. Yep. Well, here comes the beard and the dashiki to come and interrupt your service to say, hey, y'all aren't doing what the Torah says. Right. And now they want you to follow the Torah and let's throw what Paul said completely away because obviously you guys aren't into what he said anyway. Right. And that's what I'm saying. If you keep doing that, if we don't get a hold of this, all this stuff that, you know, uh, we're making it up as we go and we're not adhering to sound doctrine and what Paul taught in the Bible and holding the whole word as God's sacred word. Right. Man, if we don't do that, then, yeah, these guys are going to be able to come in and pick you apart because they're going to find inconsistencies in your doctrine, mm -hmm. stuff that's not written. Right. And then you can't tell them to do what's not written. This is true. Well, we've got to take a real quick break, and we're going to come back and talk more about the great falling away. But you can visit us online. Go to exministries.com. One out of three children in America live in homes without their biological father. It's just the way the devil wants it. God's desire is for every home to be under the authority of a man. Marriage and family is the cornerstone of God's creation plan. We failed these kids because we couldn't stay married. When parents break up a marriage, they force the children to seek an alternative identity. That kid is mad, and he ain't mad at the parents. He's mad at God. So he's going to find another belief system because you messed Christianity up because you couldn't forgive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find me a God that's mad. Music artists, actors, etc., create the subcultural movement that attracts other fatherless kids seeking identity and social relevance. I wasn't going to talk about this in this, but this is an opportunity for them to really mess things up. CERN is using antimatter to attract beings from other dimensions. Right now, there are people walking around possessed by demons from what they have done. I'm doing a message like this because it's important to understand the role that a man plays even with CERN. It's time for men to stand up and be strong. Turn the hearts of the fathers 
back to the children. So we welcome you back to the exposition and we're talking about the great falling away. So let's talk about this. What does that look like? What will people see? Well, um, so when you, when you see um, a great falling away, obviously, as we stated earlier, it's a, a fall away from the truth, truth. right? Mm -hmm. And the first thing that is affected are those under your care. So obviously for a pastor or a leader of some sort, um, it would be the people that are, that are under your, your influence. Um, and then you have to consider the children in the home will always suffer first, right? Um, and so I, I see a side note here um, in reference to Achan. If you reference Joshua chapter 7, uh, it talks about a young man who stole some, some valuables. Um, and because of that, Israel was judged by God, right? So our actions, um, I, I'm, I'm a father. And let me, let me take it back just a step here. So I grew up in a predominantly Christian home. Um, and the reason why, I, uh, or family, should I say, and the reason why I say predominantly is because I, I did have an auntie and an uncle that served another God. Um, they, they, to this day, they still practice the faith of, of Islam, right? Mm -hmm. And for so long, it was a challenge to me as a kid um, because we would go to church, then we would go to Granny House or Big Mom House after church, we would eat, but then we would fellowship with people who didn't believe or serve the same God that we serve, right? And as we know that those of that faith, um, their outward worship or reverence to their God uh, is in the garb, what they wear. Mm -hmm. So here we are leaving church, speaking in tongues, shouting, flipping over chairs, going forth, sweating and all of that. We go to my grandmother's house and then we're sitting down and, and having dinner, not for the purpose of ministering, not for the purpose of witnessing, but for the purpose of fellowship after we've just worshiped our separate God. Mm -hmm. So. It affected me up until a point where I got a little older and then the great line was drawn. Mm -hmm. And and what happened was um, the, the Islam side of my family told us that we could no longer mention the name of Jesus in their house. Mm -hmm. And so I was perplexed because per, my, my family is predominantly Christian. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're met with, a, you know, if a challenge, you know, a challenge like this, oh, this is OK. Well, this is easy. Uh, God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, good night. But um, uh, for the sake of keep staying on point and, 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 and not totally exposing that, the point I'm making is, had I not been close or in my young adult years, who knows what that would have done to my faith? Mm -hmm. I, I could have I just been challenged and become agnostic. I could have challenged all faiths and become agnostic, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I also see the effects and the generation up under me in my family. Um, some of my other nieces and nephews or, or, or younger cousins who don't get the same thing that I got or, or, or I don't see the same foundation that I have. And it's evident in their lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. So I'm not judging um, from, the, from the perspective of God doesn't, you know, the Bible speaks and we believe that his hand is not short to save. Mm -hmm. We know that. But the lifestyle choices are a bit more extreme or far off due to that very reason, because we mix faiths for so long. And when we were challenged in the, in the presence of everyone, I'm talking from babies to the, to the adults, and the, the actual line wasn't drawn, that, hey, that we serve Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Mm -hmm. So if he's not welcome, you're literally telling me that I'm not welcome. Mm -hmm. um, we see that all around the world. We mm -hmm. even see that, unfortunately, in, in the leaders in the church. Um, some of their, their children, as we, we talked about in a couple of episodes ago, because they go their own way or a, a soulless way or soulish way, um, the, the children or the generation of it up under them are affected. And yeah, we see and they always suffer. The generation under always suffers, and that's mm -hmm. why I tell people, be careful. Even with, back on the subject of church hurt. Mm -hmm. I just feel like God got me on this church hurt thing. I don't know why. But yeah. <laughs> back to that subject, though, uh, when you say, what would a great falling away look like? Mm -hmm. Well, the falling away from the church is what I'm seeing. It's a falling away. Right. And the reason is because people say their church hurt. Okay, we dealt with church hurt last week. Some people are definitely church hurt or were hurt by ministries that taught erroneous doctrines or had beliefs that, you know, hurt them some kind of way or had them do things that they couldn't explain biblically or just whatever the reason. Mm -hmm. 
But there is another group that we didn't deal with last week, and those are the herders of church. Right. Okay, so right. now there's a group that hurt, that actually hurts the church, and this is causing people to lose confidence, you know, in the Bible, um, um, as well as, you know, searching out and trusting other sources mm -hmm. for their spirituality. Right. And they're doing that because herders of church hurt them. Mm -hmm. In other words, a person left the church angrily because they didn't want to, you know, we, I've seen it so many times even here. They didn't want to live up to the standard that was being preached mm -hmm. or they didn't want to adhere to the leadership going back to fatherlessness. Maybe they didn't know how to submit to leadership properly. Mm -hmm. So they took me trying to get them to do a certain thing. They took offense to it some kind of way. Right. And even though I may, you know, try to work it out with them, you know, because they are so puffed up or just whatever the reason, they took that hurt and they left with that hurt. Uh, and it wasn't that the church hurt them. They begin to actually lash out against the church and right. hurt the church. And people are leaving the church now in droves with this root of bitterness in them. And the Bible says that that root of bitterness will defile many. Mm -hmm. What does it mean by that? Well, uh, well, anybody you're talking to about a church, especially when that church may have helped them or saved them or changed their lives or their whole family. Like, you know, we have people move here from all over the place. And then, you know, somebody gets mad or may leave. You're going to talk to a people who have uprooted their whole family, moved down here in faith, believing this is the ministry for them. And you're going to take some bad news, gossip or whatever to them to try to get them to leave with you. You really don't realize that's a root of bitterness that's defiling many. And when when that happens, people, it begins to discredit the entire church right. or the body of Christ or the source of someone's salvation could be hindered because of that. So, you know, that's a falling away that I'm seeing more so than anything. That's why we're dealing so, you know, dealing with these guys online trying to fight us and get right. us to debate and all this stuff. These are people with a root of bitterness in them. Mm -hmm. and, th and every view that they get, they're gonna have blood on their hands for people that they're convincing and people that they're, whose hearts they're turning. All they're doing is putting that same bitter root in other people right. to make them hate something and they may hinder their ability to even be saved from it and come out of it. So this is what to me, I mean, this is to me what the great falling away is beginning to look like. Not just a falling away from the faith, but a falling away from faith in the faith. Right. Where leaders and pastors and those kind of things are just shunned. Now, I had somebody tell me the other day, and this is so stupid. They said, well, see, brother, you, you, you got to make a difference because the church is the body of Christ. That's us, our body. But the institutional church was never sanctioned by God. Nowhere in the Bible is the institutional church sanctioned by God. I said, bro, what's your house? Is your house an institution? <laughs> you know institution means building. <laughs> So right. you live in an institution. So if we got more than 10 people and we got a roof over our head, is that an institution? Indeed it is. Well, not see what I'm saying. Not see what, what he's mixing up is do, he's mis, mixing denomination right. with institution. Right. right. Now, the Bible never sanctioned denomination, but it definitely sanctioned. Jesus spoke to seven institutions in the book of Revelation. Indeed. So with the things that you just mentioned, we're getting, it seems like an alarming number of ex-members, ex-Christians, people that are walking away from the faith. And it's, it's the people that were once in the faith that are walking away. Is right. that what we're seeing more of? Yeah. Um, and that's what Pastor was touching on. These are, these are the people that actually attack the church, right? So I'm, I'm going to expound on a little bit more, but let's, let's go to Proverbs 6 and 16 um, that says this. It says, these six things do what the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Um, the first is a proud look, right? A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that, that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that sow of discord among brethren, which is an exact example based on that scripture alone that describes the people that are church hurt. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what I said, these are the type of people that attack the church I'm going, I have an issue with you for an example. I have an issue with Carmina, right? I walked in church one day oh. and Sister Carmina didn't give me a peppermint. So, but it wasn't just a peppermint though, Pastor G. I like the green peppermint. I don't want the red, <laughs> right? 
But for some reason, that offended me. Mm -hmm. So now I attack the entire church based on what I feel like you did as a disservice or something to harm me. Mm -hmm. But a simple com uh, conversation could just dissolve that mm -hmm. versus me running and telling everybody, telling a lie mm -hmm. that you withheld something from me on purpose or intentionally. So now I'm doing what I feel like everybody, especially some of the, the church judge. I just judged you. I mm -hmm. just told you that your intention was to, to deliberately keep away the green peppermint from me. <laughs> right. But but I'm calling I'm saying that the church are judging that the church is judging me because I've had, I don't know, five kids and I'm, I've never married a woman before. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas mm -hmm. the church telling me, listen, young man, stop having all of these children, <laughs> brother. What, 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 what? Listen, man, you got five kids who are not being protected by you, who you can't be a priest over all at one time, who you can't, who, who you can't minister to or provide to all at one time. You, you, you got, you got three, to, you got multiple homes that are disarray or dysfunctional because of your bad decisions. Versus, hey, man, you do understand that whether it's a green or a red peppermint, they both would, you know, handle the breath issue, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah. people who attack the church don't understand going back to trying to discredit the word of God or the, or the institution of church. Their issue is one on one. Mm -hmm. their, their issue is not at the church, but they don't understand that that's what they're affecting. They're affecting the whole church. And that's where you you get your issue with God. Mm -hmm. Right. That's good. And they don't they don't know they're an agent for the devil. Right. Like you can be so upset about something that you are calling around, you know, we've had people do that. You're calling around trying to find someone that has an issue with the, the, the leadership or something so that you can get with them and talk about the church or whatever. Right, right. And you're thinking you're bringing uh, retribution or uh, to yourself or you're being vindicated. Right. Like I was right, but you have, you don't know that the enemy used that as an opportunity to slip into you yeah. and use you as you're panning the crowd, trying to find that evil one mm -hmm. you don't realize that you are the evil one trying to you know uh, uh, yoke up with another evil one mm -hmm. and I mean Proverbs 6 and 16 what you just read mm -hmm. basically describes these type of people everything that's wrong with people that hurt the church lash out against the church lash out against leadership and try to prevent others from getting free they are what God hates Right. He says right here what he hates, a proud look. Mm -hmm. That's the people that will leave and, you know, you can't talk to them. You can't help them or whatever because they feel like they're either equal to you mm -hmm. or they feel like they're just, I can hear God. Remember Dathan, Coram, and Abiram, that was their thing. They felt like they were equal to Moses. They could do what Moses did. So Moses, you can't give us commandments and tell us what to do. We're just, we can talk to God for ourselves. Yep. Remember that? Yep. And the ground opened up and swallowed them jokers up. Then a lying tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, ain't nobody going to leave and tell the whole story. They're Never. always going to tell. Right. Nobody ever Never. tells right. the whole story. Right. They're going to tell their side of the story, mm -hmm. and that's a lying tongue. And then hands that shed innocent blood. What this, what this innocent blood is, is you're killing innocent babies. You're yeah. killing babes in the faith. You're killing young people or people that are young in the faith that may not have the faith to resist your discord, mm -hmm. right? So... When you do that, and I, I use an example here, I was telling y'all about it in the back, there was a guy who left ABC, you know, and he was upset when he left, so he just picking up the phone, just randomly calling people, trying to tell everybody his side of the story, of right. course, yeah. and he picked up the phone and he called one brother and told him, we had this brother, he was working in the ministry, he was doing well in the ministry. He, he, I mean, he, you know, this is like the first ministry he had ever really come to where he was actually doing well. Right. He picked up the phone and called this brother and told him stuff about me or things he, you know, whatever he wanted to say uh, uh, as far as being upset. When he hung up the phone with his brother, this brother didn't just leave ABC. He left the faith. He, left the faith. Mm -hmm. he didn't just leave the faith. He left all faiths. Wow. Like this brother right now. He just, and I, you know, I, I remember having a vision God showed me of this guy who picked up the phone and was calling people. Fire was coming out of the phone. Blood was on his hands. He's going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. Brother, you just made somebody walk away from the faith because you were upset about something. You know what I'm saying? But people don't, you know, they just do that and then fall asleep and just sleep the next day or whatever. Right. You know, I'm the type of person that, that would keep me up forever. If right. I thought about doing that to somebody, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep for months. You know, right. I don't see mm -hmm. how people can do it. But yeah. you could be used by the devil like that. And when the devil's done with you, he throw you in the bed and let you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the situation that, you know, that happened here. That was innocent blood that was shed right. because someone was upset 
and hurting or call themselves hurting the ministry or stopping the ministry from going forward because they were no longer, uh, you know, a part of it. And then a heart that devises wicked imagination, that's someone sitting and thinking and thinking and thinking and, oh, how can I get back at them? And how can I get back at the church? What can I do? Oh, what can I do? I'm, I just, oh, what I, you know, thinking yeah. and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, y'all understand that. That's a heart that's just devising wicked imagination. You just imagine it. Oh, I see right. the church blowing up and just, oh, it's going to blow up one day. I hope right. it does. I'm going to sabotage the sign outside. The, yeah, yeah. I'm going to change the letters around on the sign. Yeah. <laughs> just whatever. <laughs> yeah. And that's sad that you sit up thinking that way about a church, right, you know, right. and then feet that run swiftly to mischief, you know, that's folks, you know, going to the internet, going where there's some gossip, going where there's some mess to try to dig up some mess to feel better about the, uh, about the way they feel. Mm -hmm. And then a false witness, of course, speaking lies, and then he that sows discord among the brethren. God says, I hate these things. Why? Because they stop the fellowship, they stop the word from going forth, and then they stop people from being helped. Mm -hmm. All because you got upset and you're in your feelings or whatever, mm -hmm. and now you are, man, you are really, really wreaking havoc on people. And some people, this was their last chance. Right. Like the church, this was it, man. I, yeah. My life has been ruined. My life has been messed up mm -hmm. up until now. Mm -hmm. I heard Pastor G preach something. That word ministered to me. Now I'm listening to what he say, whatever. And then you come and tell me, you know, that he's, well, what's some of the internet rumors? He's the straw man or, right. or whatever. Something, that's what they call me now. Yeah. Uh, whatever. <laughs> you come telling him that because you're upset. And this brother is like, well, but. Man, I really believe. No, no, no. Now he's he he preached the word. This is what I hate. What they do. Now he preached a good word. You just but but him. It's it, it's him. Well, a baby Christ can't separate the right. word from the. But that's discord, and right. that's why God says He hates it because. Man, you are ending fellowship for some people, and you, and you might be ending their spiritual life. And, you, and you're stopping unforgiveness too. I mean, just because you've decided that you don't want to reconcile or whatever reason something is keeping you from that reconciliation, you want to put that stumbling block in front of somebody else. Like, let me let me give Sister Carmina uh, the, the room to go to Pastor G or whoever it may be and work it out on their own. Why do I have to go and, and sow the discord? Because you want that peppermint. It's, not, right. it's that peppermint. Right, that's that. I want the green peppermint. Right? <laughs> right, right. And you know, and that's really sad that people would be that hateful. To want to destroy other people like that. Go right. be mad. Go be mad all by yourself over there on your own. Right. But anyway, well, the it, it, it's the devil. And that's, yeah. that's what we're saying. Right. You got so upset and you lost you. Yeah. And now you're doing or you're doing the devil's bidding. Right. And when you're in a wrath, that's why the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Sin, so right. when you're upset, go somewhere and calm down. Exactly. Don't make decisions. And, you know, I was talking about that Sunday of, about making decisions. No, we were talking about that at the last exhibition, making a decision from a position of peace. Right. That means you have to go somewhere and find peace. That's why me, man, when I get mad, 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 mm -hmm. I'm going to go home, talk to my wife, or I'm going to go in a room somewhere and talk to nobody with the mm -hmm. lights off. But I'm going to calm down before I make a decision because right. I don't want to make an emotional decision that I have to watch the results or consequences of for the rest of my life. Amen. I'm going to make a smart decision so that, you know, that I'm not going to burn bridges. You know, that's mm -hmm. what my daddy always taught me. Right. I'm not going to burn bridges and that kind of thing. I'm going to always try to work it out because I don't want to be sitting up. You know, watching, you know, like the analogy I gave about the band. I don't want to watch the band play without me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to always calm down before I make a decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to hurt anyone because I'm upset. Right. And I, and I said something. Right. And I did something. I don't want to be guilty. I don't want that blood on my hands. I don't want a fiery phone and all the stuff right. that people are doing. Man, I, when I stand before God, I want to be able to say, Lord, I was 100% for your kingdom. That's right. And even when I felt like doing it, God, I restrained myself with temperance mm -hmm. so that I could do the right thing. Amen. So after the conversation that we've had today, people have to understand that the great falling away is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And like you said, people are allowing the devil to rule their hearts. They've just completely remove God's love from the scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so, so something that EX Ministries has been doing for quite some time um, is bringing a, a clear understanding of what we allow to entertain us, right? So um, I don't wanna get this wrong, Pastor, part six is detained for entry. That's it. Detained for entry. So we learned that you allow something to entertain you is really opening you up to be detained. Mm -hmm. And so what we don't realize, especially in this age, YouTube era, the social media era, 
we're on these sites and we're on these, the social media all day long being entertained by it, being opened up and it's something entering us to change our hearts, to change our minds, to change the way we live, to change the way we process what we're being told by somebody in authority. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I go off to the, to the left or off to the side and pastor sits me down and say, hey, Jay, let me explain something to you, man. I've seen this or I noticed this or I heard about this. If, if I'm spending all of my time being ministered to by the world, I won't have the heart or the, or the disposition to receive that correction from the person that's in authority or right. who's supposed to be watching for that's my right. soul. Right. So you have the people or the likes of somebody like Charlamagne the God who's uh, in pop culture, someone, someone very relevant in this day, who befriend people like a Carl Lentz of Hill, son of New York, or other famous or popular preachers, guys who mix the word of God, um, who, who, who pretty much leverage God's truth to gain that audience for the, for the work of the enemy or for the work of the devil. Somebody who can't write the, rightly divide the Bible, I mean, at no cost, not even at a five-year-old's level, right? But can sit on a platform next to somebody who's supposed to be carrying the truth of God and then call each other friends. And the Bible is very clear. Any, any friend of the world is, uh, is enmity with God, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's what the Bible says, then why are we allowing entertainers to be our source of what we call truth or what we say it isn't true? Mm -hmm. um, so then you have people, uh, here recently, Ricky Smiley was quoted saying that, mm -hmm. uh, now, if, I, if I'm saying this right, he got his popularity in the church being a uh, mm -hmm. Christian comedian. Mm -hmm. Like he was known for um, a couple of different things that he did in, in comedy, um, but, but clean. But now he's been serving in the world for years now. Got his own radio show, then you know had his own experiences, and he's affiliated with one of these fraternities. So now his his take on the Bible out of out of all of these years is now I don't know about the Bible, man, because I think it promotes slavery or it it it, it supports slavery. And how is that? If, if if any man being Christ, he's a new creature, right? So. If I was a slave owner, if I'm in Christ, the Bible just told me that I'm not anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm forgiven for those actions. Mm -hmm. So you, you get the likes of these celebrities or popular people or all these different um, life coaches who are taking bits of what they can see move people emotionally, and then they're using it, um, you know, obviously as agents of, of the enemy yeah. to persuade and, people and, uh, and it's, in another direction. And like you said, it's a, spirit, it's a spiritual issue here. So the falling away is because of what is going on in people's spirits. So whether they're getting full of this uh, music or whether they're out there doing, like you said, Ricky Smiley coming out, uh, Charlemagne coming out. Uh, Lecrae at one point was saying that there was times when he even questioned different parts of the Bible. He sure did. Uh, Andy Mineo, uh, all of these other, you know, uh, holy hip hoppers and just different ones. All of a sudden, everyone has a problem with the Bible. Everyone's questioning it. Everyone Everyone, you know, is saying because of the slavery in it and this whole black thing or because of, you know, the slave owners uh, reading it to, to the slaves or giving it to the slaves or just whatever. Mm -hmm. All of these different questions are coming and that's a part of the falling away. But those are spiritual issues that people are ignoring. You know, a long time ago when we came to Christ, we believed that something spiritual happened. Right. It wasn't a head decision. Right. And then we just took a head decision and tried to be the best we could. Right. It was a spiritual decision where we knew at the minute we surrendered to it, we got to watch out for the devil. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. It was a, it, now we're in a battle. It's us against the, the, the powers of darkness, mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness and, uh, you know, uh, uh, principalities, uh, powers, rulers uh, in high places, all those different things. Now there is a fight against those because we're saved. So the falling away can, can easily be um, categorized as a falling away spiritually mm -hmm. where people aren't at the same spiritual place that they used to be. Right. And this is why we have so many of these commercials with the drugs and different things. People are trying to handle a, a spiritual problem with something natural. natural. Because wow. when was the last time you was at church and somebody actually dealt with the devil, right. talked right. about the devil, right. rebuked the devil? You know, had a pastor tell me the other day, hey man, all my, I mean, a lot of my members went to the Beyonce concert, man. I mean, how do you stop them from going? Dude, do you talk about the devil? Right. Do you rebuke the devil? Right. Do you speak against Beyonce? Do you preach these things? Right. So we're ignoring right. spiritual issues and this is causing a great falling away. So I'm going to read this and close this out. But this was good. I think it just made a lot of sense for people about this falling away. Spiritual issues are all over the place because people do not want to deal with things spiritually. You cannot be in Christ, which is spiritual, mm -hmm. right? Right. Without understanding your spiritual responsibility. So when you accept Christ, get ready. 
People are suffering from anxiety, depression, insomnia, sleep paralysis, dysthemia, which is hopelessness, suicidal thoughts, uh, evil intentions, unforgiveness. People are suffering from all these, and these are all spirits that oppress people that fall away from God. Mm -hmm. So you may fall away from God totally, or you may fall away from God in an area. Right. But either way, the devil is waiting with these spirits to come upon you. Right. Many try to get diagnosed so they can get medications, mm -hmm. but the meds give them even more spiritual <laughs> issues <laughs> called side effects. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you fall away from the truth, you fall into darkness where spirits will invade your mind and body with the spirit. But uh, with the spirit of God comes the fruits of the spirit, which oppose these wicked spirits. So all these things are opposed by the spirit of God through the fruits of the spirit. As people continue to fall away, though, from the truth of God's word, they will fall victim to these spirits and their lives will be filled with these issues. Unfortunately, this is our world in a nutshell. Unfortunately. I mean, every day, this is what we're seeing. This is all the emails I'm getting. How do I get over depression? How do I get over anxiety? How do I get over this or that or this? And they don't realize, dude, these are demons. Mm -hmm. And the only way to overcome it is with the spirit of God and the fruits of the spirit. People constantly searching are searching uh, for a fix instead of embracing the truth of the one that created them. Second Timothy 2 and 1 says, Now beseech ye, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 